Hello my darlings, welcome to Quits Gaming. My name is Sylvan Morgan. We're going to do something a little different today. We are going to be doing a review of a program, uh, which is a screen capture program. And for transparency's sake, I want to clarify that although I have not been given any monetary um, gain from this, as far as the company goes, they did provide me the program for free in order to do a review. So I want you to know that. So take that for what you will. But I don't plan on pulling any punches. I plan on um, explaining exactly what this can and cannot do. And if you feel that it is for you or not, you can check it out in the description below. So with that being said, this is for Cyberlink Screen Recorder 3, which came out recently. It came out in March. Um, the end of March. I'm a little late because I was in vacation, um, but I've returned and I am excited to do this. Been playing around with the program for a while, kind of got used to it. You'll notice I'm not recording with it because you can't record it and display its abilities at the same time. However, you can uh, show a lot of what it can do. So, first off, you have the ability to record and to stream, which for a screen capture program is actually pretty good. Granted, it doesn't have a lot of the different um, built-in things and features like scenes or sources like uh, you'd see from OBS, which is what I'm using and what I normally use. However, it does allow you to stream directly onto Twitch, YouTube, and Facebook which is pretty nice because you can go on really simple easy way to set it up you just click on which one you want you hit the uh this would normally say login an additional window pops up you fill in all your information log into your account and it will pop you back into here where it gives you options for what frame rate or video resolution and frame rate as well as the url of where you're streaming to on your account I haven't signed in with Facebook because I don't do streaming on Facebook, but overall it's actually pretty useful. Um, it's kind of nice if you want to do a tutorial like this and you're like, hey, this is how you do it. Um, the recording feature is also pretty nice because of the device option, which I will get to later. But first off, you have full screen. Full screen is exactly what you're seeing right now. It is. Uh, different resolutions you can actually change it to whatever resolution you want but it's for captioning your captioning capturing your entire screen for me I have multiple displays so it's a little weird in the fact that like I can only capture my first display unless I see you're actually it'll actually show you like what you can do so this is essentially what I'm going to be capturing I can move it over to my other screens and I can even capture it between screens, which is really interesting. But when you're like me and your screens are like lined up like that and not like that, it's kind of pointless. But it does give you the option. This would be a custom, obviously. It automatically switches to custom. You can use these to adjust it however you like. So if I only want to show people like this area, just move it down to that. They're only going to see what's in that area. All right, full screen. You'll notice, don't believe you can see it, but there is the border all the way around the entire screen. So it does show you what you're doing. Mouse clicks, you can uh, set the mouse click animation color so you can actually show people how to do things with tutorials, which is always interesting. I watch a lot of tutorials online. Um, when it comes to programs like Photoshop, Procreate, uh, various different things like that. And you can actually choose if you want the mouse click animation, which is basically like a little blip, to show up, or if you want to change it to a certain color. Webcam, yes or no. Uh, microphone, yes or no. Which you can essentially uh, do in the options menu. Um, for the most part, You'll set it up, you'll choose one from your already listed devices that are on your computer, and you click OK. That's it. I think that there are a couple sliders to adjust like the volume level, but it's really not that hard of a user interface. Pretty much anyone could get these 
calendar. Get the hang of it with a little bit of looking around. You can actually set a time limit. So if you're like, yeah, I'm only going to record for an hour or I'm only going to record 30 minutes of gameplay, it'll actually help you do that. So let's say we want like, excuse you, one minute, zero hours, record, shows this little thing, press F9 to start stop. And it's essentially going to, no, I didn't turn on the mouse click, essentially only going to record a minute. It's already minimized, minimizes itself, it has a little countdown. You can even take a screenshot, which is nice. Um, but for the most part, you don't have to do anything else. It'll automatically shut off in a minute. And that's all you really have to do. While we're waiting for that to happen, you have the library. This is something I already uh, opened up, or I already recorded yesterday when I was playing with it. And it essentially has all these built-in little things that you can do, which is super fucking awesome. But you can also just look at how it's playing, what it's doing. And it's, it's kind of nice just because it lets you edit it without having to go into like four different programs. And it looks like our, uh, Yes, yes I do. And so this is the one that we actually that we actually just recorded. Go to play. You can see my mouse moving around. You can see the different stuff that opened up. You can even see the programs I was using while I was using it while I was talking to you. Since I didn't have the webcam or the uh, microphone on, you're not going to get double microphone or anything like that. So this shows just video, this shows just screenshots, this shows both. You can arrange them however you want, and if I'm not mistaken, yep, that's for editing. And for publishing. So you can, ooh, really? That's actually really nice. It tells you exactly how much used space, remaining procedure produced. Facebook, YouTube, Daily Motion, Vimeo something I am not part of and something I am also not part of. It's kind of nice though because you can select to a format and save it instead but you also have a lot of these things like balloon plated text and things that help you add a little bit to your video which for a screen capture program is not necessary but it's a nice little perk to have and something that I actually appreciate that they decided to put in because you don't get that a lot. So here is the settings menu. And this is where you would put in all of your information. You can have it always on top. You can have it minimized after you launch it. Um, I always have automa uh, automatically check software updates because they usually have a lot of bug fixes. You have your file where exactly it's going to save. If you want any specific prefix to it, you want the screenshots to be named anything, what you want them to be saved as. PNG is usually a better lossless file. Um, monitor setup. I can choose, since I have three monitors, I can choose primary, secondary, or third. I can record only the selected window. There's the audio, as I said, microphone, system audio. This is the mic volume that I'm picking up and exactly how much I need to slide around. Webcam, I can also select the webcam, which I don't think actually will select it because, oh, I was about to say, I don't think it'll actually select it because it's currently in use in um, OBS. Unfortunately, with a lot of Logitech webcams, they do not like to work with two programs at once. Hotkeys, which is kind of nice if you want to just do that and don't want to mess with it. Or you can participate and improve the program by giving information back. So, now that we've gone over all the basics, there are the record capture options. So, there's full screen, obviously, which you saw. I should actually knock this down to like 20 seconds.
or not. I don't know if that's my keyboard acting up. Nope, it just doesn't want to give me 20 seconds. Got it. So, you can switch it to game, which will actually let you choose a, oh, like the VLC media player that popped up on a different window. That's great. One problem with having multiple monitors is sometimes programs like to pop up on the monitor all the way over there for no reason. Didn't ask you to do that. But yes, so you can essentially choose any program. I could actually record OBS recording Cyberlink Screen Recorder 3 in a perpetual recording if I really wanted to. But more or less, it... How do I explain it? It chooses a program more than a space. So it, it'll essentially lock to whatever program it's on. Let's see. For example, I have this window up a lot because of the fact that I'm... fact that I'm switching between Rift Audio and Normal Audio very frequently. So I can lock it to an app, and you see how it changes color? Boop! Now I'm literally only recording this. You can see the vague outline of the dotted lines around it. Um, and it's kind of nice because it will tell me exactly where it is currently recording by showing me that. You can also do custom. Which is pretty much drag, and that's what we're going to be recording. You can move it around by clicking on this. You can choose to select it, but the thing is, it's not going to select a window as a lock to app would. The device. I have not gotten around to testing this yet because my Elgato has been acting up. But the fact that you can record a third-party device is very helpful. <laughs> so I could do a webcam, or when it was actually uh, hooked up, I could do an Elgato capture card, which essentially lets you capture off of a third-party gaming system, I think Nintendo Wii, uh, PlayStation, Xbox. But for this, it would be like... A webcam since I don't have that hooked up. Then you can choose the resolution, the FPS, all those different things, but like, oh, that's right. It's currently being used. <laughs> but overall, it is a very useful program. Um, summary, it's it's a lot more simple than OBS, for example. It doesn't have scenes, you're not going to be able to import elements onto it, such as um, donation tickers or chat bubbles or anything like that. However, if you're looking for something that's clean and easy to use, then I would suggest the screen recorder. It's a lot easier to use than OBS um, having to program in all the different things, but it also lacks a lot of the same capabilities. It's a totally different kind of program, so it's kind of like trying to compare apples and oranges. Um, as far as that goes, I'd suggest it for people that want to do video tutorials, uh, especially video tutorials of programs like Photoshop, Paint Tool Sci, anything like that, or, or even tutorials on like how to do something on a computer, anything where you have to capture your desktop or a program, very useful. Um, if you're doing just game capturing and you're not bothering with all the additional shit that a lot of streamers do, then I would do that. It's actually pretty useful for game capture because it can do a program or it can do an app. Um, I always, unlike most gamers, I like to play things in windowed mode, which apparently drives a lot of people insane, but I like it because it's easier for the capture. Um, but unfortunately, boop, boop. I apologize, that took a second. I'm just looking at the um, resources 
So you're going to notice that whew, it also takes up a lot less memory than um, OBS. OBS takes up about 1100 megabytes of memory. Screen Recorder takes up 45 megabytes. It also takes up less CPU, like by like 0.2 versus like 3%. Then again, I have, are, are you just not going to look anymore? Side of your, you don't want to, oh, that's why. That's not the display I wanted. Okay, well. Well, that's what it is. Apparently, I brought up the, uh, well, that's got something on it. Okay. Well, anyway, that being said, I, uh, <laughs> there we go. I brought up the, um, task manager to take a look at the different various things, and it decided OBS was going to kill my screen, which... The screen's still working, it's just not being detected. Again, another reason why screen capture is a little bit better, less resources, less demanding on your computer, especially if you're trying to play games that um, take up a lot of resources, it would probably be a lot better. Live streaming, I wouldn't see it used as much as li in live streaming. Um, however, that's only really because in live streaming in a lot of the community that I've seen, you have things like this, which are like donation subscribers, donation ticker, chat bubbles, you know, basically everything that's going on around the live streamer. If you wanted to focus more on just what you're doing, um, even if it's for, unfortunately, you can't stream to Picardo with this, which is too bad because I could definitely see you using it, but for an art streamer, it would be very useful, um, especially because art streamers have a lot of resources taken up with their programs and their canvas size. So with that being said, take away with it what you will, but I do recommend this program if you want to record things, especially if you specialize in tutorials for the PC, because it's very useful for that. If you're live streaming, it might not be what you're looking for. However, it is still very good for capturing. Um, and it's even got some built-in editing abilities, which isn't something you get every day. So, that being said, if you would like to get the uh, trial program for yourself, you can go and click the link below in the description. Otherwise, you might see me for a few more of these. Uh, I actually really enjoy doing reviews. So, hope all of you have a great night. Love you, darlings.